Yo. Let's explore the different tools. We have the transform tool, smooth move tool, the scale tool, rotate tool, and mirror tool. So we'll be taking a look at these tools separately in another video. All right, so we won't be worrying about them right now. All right, so let's continue. Next, we have the circle tool. And if I left click on it, just select it, we see some options appear over here to the right. You can mess around with these to see what they do. But right now I'm going to go through some of the different layer types. So I'm going to deselect the options and select the first one. Left click and drag. And as you can see, we created a circle. We essentially created a circle layer as well. And over here to the bottom left, we see the properties for the circle we just created. So I can example left click this right here to change the color. And I like using the HSV option. And you click on the different colors to change the color of the circle and click close. There are other options such as the amount which allows you to change the opacity of the circle. So left click the value then click on the minus sign to decrease the value and now we see that the circle is now transparent. We have a bunch of different tools and I won't go through everything but here we have the radius which will allow me to change the size of the circle. So I can use a plus sign to increase its value and here the circle has gotten bigger. And of course, I can also decrease its size. Let me change that amount to 1 and have a look at the feather option. This basically blurs or smudges the circle. Which you can see here. Here we have the origin, which is the position of the circle on the canvas. And here we have invert, which takes the color from the circle and applies it to all the areas that did not have a color. And you can definitely do some cool stuff with this, which we might explore later or, or in another video. So let me turn this off. You can also scale or move the circle by clicking on the transform tool. Let me zoom in a bit, then select the circle and you will see two control points. The one on the outside allows you to change the size. Left click on the point on the inside, then drag the circle wherever you want. Also note that you can't move the circle by clicking anywhere else. It has to be on the point itself. It's a bit weird, but you'll get used to it. Now, let me delete this layer by clicking this icon right here. We can also create the circle by ticking two or more options and create my circle. Note that we now have two layers in the layers panel, one for the inside of the circle and one for the edge of the circle. So let me delete these and compare them side by side. So I'll select one option at a time and create two circles. So one is a normal circle and the other is what you would call a region circle or, or layer. Now let me rename these by left clicking on the name and type circle 1. And the next one I'll call circle 2. And this is the normal circle which we created before. And circle 2 is a circle we created using the region layer option. So onto this one we have different points that we can select and move around to manipulate the shape of the circle. And the one in the center we use to move the circle on the canvas. Also remember that we have different settings that we can mess around with. But I'll delete these layers and create another circle using the outline layer option. So with that selected, I can draw my circle which is just the outline of the circle. You can change the size of the outline before you create it. So if I type 4 for example and create another circle, we can see that its thickness is 4 which is smaller than this one which is 10. And remember that you can change the size and color of these circles and other objects in the properties panel. Just go there and play around with the different values. Also, each object will have varying values. 
So let's delete these and move on to the rectangle tool. Select the rectangle tool and we can see over here some similar options but each shape of the object is treated differently. To create this shape just left click and drag then release and we now have our rectangle in all its glory. And in the properties panel we see some similar options as well as some different ones. Now the interesting thing is that if I select my transform tool and try to move the shape we don't see the control point inside but notice that we have two points on the, on the outside but if I should select any of these points they only allow me to change the width and the height. So here's the thing to move or perform transformations on this object you will have to actually create a group layer. So with the rectangle layer selected, go down to the icon that looks like a folder and click on that and the rectangle layer is now inside that group. And we see that there are some control points here. So the green one, which you already know is to move, moves the object. The blue one allows you to rotate the object. This one allows for scaling on the x-axis and its double at the top allows for scaling on the y-axis. This one right here allows for uniform scaling and this red one is for skewing and you can draw these in different directions to get the, the results that you want. Pretty much all objects can be placed inside of a group and be manipulated this way. The next tool we have is the star tool. And if we select it, we see some options here, most notably the star points option, which is used to change the number of points on the star. So if I create a star, then change the points to 10 and draw, we now have a star with 10 points, but I'm not going to count it. I'm just going to assume that it's 10. I'm going to select this star and we can also change the amount of points in the properties window. So let's scroll down and look for points and change that to 5. And we can of course use these control points to alter the star in different ways. Feel free to play around with that. Obviously I won't be going through every single detail. So it's up to you to explore the various options. So let me delete these stars. And move on to the polygon tool. Simply left click at various points on the canvas, then click back on the first point to close the shape. If we select the transform tool, then click on the shape, we can see the points that make up the shape and you can just left click and drag to move the points or to alter the shape. If you wanted to add more points, go to where you want it to be added then right click and select insert item from the list add as many points as needed to create whatever shape you want Okay, so let me delete this and the next tool is the gradient tool. Over here we can choose between different gradients. This first one is linear, so if I click on that, then left click and drag, we get a gradient. Now if you left click and drag again, it will just create another gradient layer. So that's what you don't want to do. To modify the gradient, all you need to do is select the transform tool, make sure the layer is selected and you will see these two control points. And if you left click and drag either of them, you can alter the gradient and change its direction. So let's remove this and create a radial gradient. Click the radial gradient option, 
left click and drag and you'll have your gradient. Select the transform tool, then you can modify the parameters using these control points. You can of course swap the colors by clicking on the gradient option in the properties. And left click and drag these black arrows to change their positions. You can also change the colors by first clicking on the, the arrow of the color you want to change. Then select the color and just have fun with it. Let me just delete that and create a conical gradient. By clicking on the third option here, left click and drag and we get this. And you can use the transform tool to select the points and alter it. Okay, on to the next one which is the spiral gradient. This is what that looks like and maybe you could use this to put yourself to sleep if you are having sleeping issues, who knows. And to the next tool, which is the spline tool, similar to the polygon tool, left click to create a point, then move somewhere else, and left click again to create additional points. But if we hold down the left mouse button and drag the mouse, we can create a curve like so. So left click, hold the left mouse button and drag to create the curve. Sadly, we can't just click on the first point to close the shape, but instead we have to right click, then select loop spline from the menu and the shape will close. Notice it only created an outline, because we have only the outline button selected in the options. If we selected the region layer, then the inner part of the shape would be filled with color, but we can still add a region to this. Let me select the transform tool, go to the, the layer, then right click the layer and select make region and the shape will be filled with color and you can still manipulate all the points and insert additional points which you already know how to do. Keep in mind that the outline of the color will show up as two separate layers and you can turn off layers by clicking on the tick next to the name of the layer. And now I'm going to delete this and move on to the draw tool. And all you need to do is just to left click and drag to draw. But keep in mind that for each stroke a layer will be created. So for drawing a lot, it's not really practical. Also, you can alter the points. The next tool is the cutout tool. And to demonstrate this, I'll create a shape that we can cut. So what you do is left click and drag to make a selection on the shape. And once you release, whatever is outside of that selection will be deleted. Well, that's not true. The cool thing about this is that all it did was create a mask to hide the shape. So as you can see in the layers panel, it created a folder with a mask and the shape inside. So you can move the shape outside of the folder to reveal the original. But let me undo that. You can actually edit the mask by making sure that the mask layer is selected. And use the transform tool to click on the points and move them around to alter the mask. This is cool because it's non-destructive and you always, as much as possible, want to work in a non-destructive way. The next tool on the list is the Width tool and I'll create a circle to demonstrate how it works. 
So if I select the width tool and go to the circle and left click and drag on any of the points, I'm able to expand that particular area. You can also decrease the area as well. So this is a very interesting tool that you can use to thicken or soften different areas. All right, the next tool we have is the fill tool. What this does, it allows you to fill a shape with color. So with the tool selected, you choose a color and left click on the shape. But also remember that you can do pretty much the same thing in the shape's properties. And the next tool is the eye drop tool. And this allows you to sample colors that you can then add to whatever shape is in your scene. So as you can see, with the tool selected, if I left click on a color, we can see it show up in the color swatch. And that's basically it for that tool. Okay, now the text tool. So select the text tool then left click anywhere on the canvas then you'll be able to add your text click ok and here's your text you can alter the text in the properties window you can change its color you can change the font type However, the strange thing about this is that you'll have to type in the name of the font or copy and paste the name. Yeah, it's ridiculous, I know, but just keep telling yourself, okay, it's free, I didn't pay for this, if that will make you feel any better. You can also enter the path to the fonts directory, but that's just more work. Anyway, you can mess around with the other parameters to see what works. Next tool is the sketch tool, which allows you to draw. However, this does not create a layer. And to hide the drawing, you can untick here where it says show sketch. Next, we have the brush tool, which is pretty much useless. So just ignore it, at least in this version of Synfig. And the final tool we have is the zoom tool. To zoom in, just left click on the canvas and to zoom out, hold down the control key and left click. And finally, we're done with the tools. Yo. Yeah.